This is the King Street Station in Seattle, Washington, a classic old train station that's been beautifully restored, evoking an era from the 1940s and 1950s when taking a long journey on a train was as common as taking a flight on an airplane is today. These days, the King Street Station mostly serves Amtrak passengers, but we're not here today for a ride with Amtrak. We're here for a much more luxurious train ride. We're headed to Vancouver, British Columbia on the Rocky Mountaineer. But before boarding begins, there's a Rocky Mountaineer tradition to join in on. Time to board the train. And here's my wife. Notice that the conductor directs those two people in front of her to board that single level rail car on the left and that he directed her to keep walking. Those single level cars are roughly equivalent to first class on an airplane. We're headed down to the end of the train where there's one very special rail car and it's better than first class. It's what's known on the Rocky Mountaineer as gold leaf service. Notice that the last car is a much taller two-level car. On the lower level is a dining room where a few hours from now they'll serve us a fantastic meal. And you'll see in a minute that up on the top level is a very comfortable seating area with big picture windows, and a big glass dome overhead to offer the best views. We're the first to arrive at the Gold Leaf car, and we've got about 60 other passengers behind us who we'll be sharing this Gold Leaf car with today. As we get aboard, we meet some of the staff that'll be traveling with us today, and we just need to climb up a little circular staircase to get up to the upper level and find our seats. So we all have our seats now and we're heading out of the station as they make staff introductions over our car's PA system. In order to avoid the busiest part of downtown Seattle, where the Pike Place Market and several other big tourist attractions are located, the train tracks go underground and we're approaching the entrance to that tunnel right now. I've edited out the tunnel view, but look what we see right after the tunnel. It's Seattle's Pier 66 with a pretty great cruise ship docked there, Norwegian Joy, a ship my wife and I will be boarding in Los Angeles about five months from now for a Mexican Riviera cruise. During the summer months, Norwegian Joy is based in Seattle for cruises to Alaska. As our train makes its way through the Seattle waterfront, you're gonna get a glimpse in just a minute here of a pretty famous Seattle landmark. See it there? The Seattle Space Needle. Here's a much better view. The Rocky Mountaineer organization was kind enough to provide me with some aerial footage of the train making its way through the Seattle waterfront. Now, this was not shot the day we were aboard. If you look carefully, you'll see that at the end of the train, there are two of those two-level gold leaf rail cars in this shot. And on the day we boarded, there was just one of those two-level cars. But this aerial video of the Rocky Mountaineer making its way along the waterfront is so beautiful, it seemed like a no-brainer to include it here in my little YouTube video. Downtown Seattle is a very beautiful place for sure, but you ain't seen nothing yet. The route that the Rocky Mountaineer travels for this trip to Vancouver takes it through some spectacular scenery. You'll see as we continue our way north. Back to the views from our seats on the upper level of the Gold Leaf Rail Car, our hosts are making their way down the aisle with champagne. Rocky Mountaineer employees are the nicest, 
friendliest I've ever encountered in my travels. And the ones serving us in the gold leaf car, they're the best of the best. With our slightly more than five hour trip to Vancouver, just barely getting underway here, we toast each other and the spectacular journey we're all going to experience together today. Much of that journey today will take us right along the shoreline of Puget Sound. In case you're not familiar with what a sound is in geographical terms, a sound is an ocean channel between two bodies of land. Puget Sound is also an estuary of the Pacific Ocean. In fact, it's the second largest estuary in the western United States after San Francisco Bay. I was impressed with all the homes we saw along the tracks. As a train fanatic, I couldn't stop thinking about how great it would be to live along here with not only a view of Puget Sound, but of the trains going by too. Well, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes here and let you enjoy looking at some of the scenery we saw on this spectacular trip along the coastline of the Pacific Northwest on the Rocky Mountaineer. It is now time for dinner, and we've been invited to move downstairs to the dining room on the lower level of our rail car. Remember that this two-level rail car is part of Rocky Mountaineer's Gold Leaf service, and the majority of the passengers on this train are traveling in a single-level Silver Leaf car that doesn't have a dining room. Those Silver Leaf passengers have a pull-down tray in the back of the seat in front of them and are fed there at their seats, like how it's done in first class on an airplane. But this is the gold leaf car, better than first class in my opinion, so we've got this much nicer situation for dining. For my entree, I chose this pork tenderloin, which was delicious, really tender and flavorful, and it was served with sweet potatoes and squash. We're going to take a very short break now, and when we come back, we'll have 
A close encounter with three BNSF locomotives delivering a huge load of... Well, you'll just have to wait and see. And later, a spectacular aerial view as we cross the border into Canada on the way to our final destination, the beautiful city of Vancouver, British Columbia. We are back on the Rocky Mountaineer, traveling through some beautiful country along Puget Sound in Northwest Washington State, on our way to our final destination of Vancouver, British Columbia. This is a time-lapse video I made by attaching a GoPro to the inside of the forward-facing window of the two-level rail car we're traveling in today. And this part of the trip right here is truly one of the most beautiful of the entire route. We're coming into the little village of Fairhaven, which is on the southern end of the big city of Bellingham, Washington. These tracks are owned by BNSF, and so you end up seeing a lot of BNSF freight trains on this trip. And a passenger train, like the Rocky Mountaineer, always has priority over a freight train, so you'll usually see those BNSF freight trains on a siding alongside the main line as they wait for the Rocky Mountaineer to go by. But unfortunately, Amtrak trains get an even higher priority than the Rocky Mountaineer. So, just north of Bellingham, we had to pull over onto this siding and wait for an Amtrak train to come through. And we weren't the only ones. There was a BNSF freight train that had been heading up the coast just behind us. So we had to wait for it to catch up with us on the siding, and then we both had to wait for Amtrak to pass by. Now I'm gonna pause the video right here to point out one little detail on this particular BNSF locomotive that I bet you wouldn't have noticed on your own. There are several different paint schemes that BNSF locomotives can have. This one I find kind of interesting. It's called the swoosh paint scheme. Orange and yellow are the main colors, but notice the BNSF lettering is in black with a swoosh underneath it. Now let's compare that to the next locomotive, no swoosh and yellow lettering. Now, to get this shot of the freight train, I was shooting from the open-air observation area at the very back end of the lower level of our two-level rail car. And from down here, you can't see what's in those freight cars. Any guesses? From my seat up on the second floor, it's easy to see that this train is carrying a big load of coal. Well, we ended up sitting on the siding for 20 or 30 minutes. Didn't bother me at all, though, because they were serving us dessert and drinks the entire time. Eventually, the Amtrak train made its way through, and we were given the green light to get back on our way. The next big excitement was when we reached the Canadian border, and it happened so fast that I missed most of it with my camera, so I'll use this aerial footage that the Rocky Mountaineer folks made available to me. That white structure just to the right of the train there is the southbound checkpoint for cars traveling into the USA. And up at the top of the screen, that tall white arch is called the Peace Arch. It commemorates the treaties that were signed by the US and Canada back in 1812. In this stock footage, you can see a big traffic jam of cars trying to go north into Canada, but when we passed through the border, the big jam up was actually in the southbound direction, trying to get back into the USA. Once we crossed the border, a Canadian flag was proudly paraded down the aisle of our rail car, while the Canadian anthem played over the PA system. More beautiful views of the coast in this stretch of the route on our way to Vancouver. And I thought this was interesting. 
I think those are crab traps there in this little fishing port at Crescent Beach on the south side of the city of Surrey. About 10 minutes later, we're in the city of Surrey, approaching the Fraser River. Things are looking more like a big city now, with freeway overpasses and bridges, but lots of trees too. It beats the views from a train if you are in Los Angeles or Phoenix. And you can see the Fraser River now. We're gonna stay on this side of it for a little while longer. Notice that the sun is getting pretty low in the sky now, as we are about four and a half hours in to our five and a quarter hour train ride. Now, I have not put the video into slow motion here. This is real time. It's just that the train has slowed way down here because we're approaching the train bridge over the Fraser River. And anytime a train goes over the bridge, it has to do so very slowly. We're still in the city of Surrey at this point, but once we cross over the Fraser River, we'll be in New Westminster, just to the east of Vancouver. We are making our approach to the train bridge now, and we've really slowed down even more, but that's gonna give us a chance to enjoy some nice views at a leisurely pace. If you're a train geek, I think you're really gonna like most of the rest of the video because we are gonna see a lot of great train stuff here for most of the rest of the way. I'm gonna just let the music play and let you enjoy the views as we make our way over the Fraser River into New Westminster, through Burnaby, and finally to the Pacific Central Station in Vancouver.
this trip on the Rocky Mountaineer is just about over. We're getting real close to the Pacific Central Station in Vancouver now. You can see the sun is setting, and it's been quite a day. We woke up in Seattle, Washington. Had some fun there in Seattle, had a nice lunch on the waterfront. We made our way to the train station at about 2 p.m., and we were the first to arrive for our 3 p.m. departure on the Rocky Mountaineer. It has been a beautiful ride, and the staff really spoiled us. I can't wait to ride the Rocky Mountaineer again. One year from now, in July of 2020, we'll be aboard the Rocky Mountaineer once again for an even more scenic trip, the route from Vancouver through the Rocky Mountains to Banff. If you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that this is a good video that they should recommend to other people. If you know some train geeks, click the share button to share this video with them. And if you like train videos, travel videos, or if you just like these videos because you find that my voice puts you right to sleep, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching.